everyone, it's Katrina. Number 10. The Bim Betka Rock Shelters in 1957, a doctor was looking out the window of a train in India. Dr. Vishnu Wakankar noticed some peculiar structures in Madhya Pradesh. The curious rock structures looked extremely similar to ones he'd studied as an archaeologist in France and Spain. He then visited the area with a team of researchers and was shocked to discover 750 prehistoric rock shelters. They became known as the Beambedka Rock Shelters, and they were made by some of the earliest humans during this stone age. The rock shelters have earned their place as a UNESCO World Heritage Site, and within the ancient caves are some of the oldest paintings in all of India. They were drawn in red and white and span a multitude of exciting themes. Everything from singing to dancing, hunting, and other activities of the Stone Age humans can be seen captured in these ancient paintings. The oldest of all the paintings was made about 12,000 years ago, when woolly mammoths still roamed the Earth, but the most recent of them were done only two 2,300 years ago. That means, for 10,000 years, the 750 caves here were home to a nameless civilization. Being so old, it should come as no surprise that the caves are home to myths and legends. One legend is that the caves were inhabited by demons. Locals sometimes call them dant, which means teeth. It's a reference to the teeth of the demonic beings they believe used to live in the caves. But of course, there is no evidence of demons. The real mystery is that the rock art found here is almost identical to rock art found across the globe in Australia. And there are also similar artifacts that have been discovered to the West in France. Pretty cool coincidence, huh? Number 9. Eric the Red in 985 AD, at the tail end of the Viking Age, Eric the Red led a group of farmers from Iceland to build a new settlement in Greenland. Archaeological evidence has shown that the settlement thrived for 400 years on Greenland's west coast, but then the settlement abruptly vanished. All contact with Norse-controlled Greenland was gone by the early 15th century, causing many back home to wonder what became of the settlers. There were numerous attempts to make contact. There were expeditions to find the missing settlers, who'd presumably gotten rich off the natural resources of Greenland. Even King Christian IV famously launched three expeditions to locate the settlers, but they were never found. The official colonization of Greenland didn't begin in modern times until 1721. Danish missionary Hans Egede established a colony in Greenland to convert the Inuit natives. It was also part of his job to re-establish ties with the Norse, who were still believed to be somewhere on the island. But after 200 unsuccessful years of looking, people finally accepted in the 19th century that the Norsemen were gone. That was hardly the end of the search, though. From 1870 to 1920, there was widespread interest in where the Vikings had gone. Scientists suggested that they'd moved to other parts of the Arctic. In 1912, explorer Vidalmur Stefansson encountered a group of Inuit on Canada's Victoria Island. The Inuit had reddish-brown hair and slender, muscular builds. They looked, to the explorers at least, like they had a splash of Viking blood. The discovery of the Inuit group also sparked a new theory. The theory, which is still alive today, says that the Vikings continued west to Canada, where they integrated with the indigenous population. Number 8. Fragments of Alien Technology in a shocking new claim, Harvard professor Avi Lieb says he's discovered fragments of alien technology. Avi and his team of researchers recently acquired fragments of a meteor that crashed off the coast of Papua New Guinea in 2014. The fragments were analyzed at Harvard, with the results confirmed by the U.S. Space Command. The meteorite definitely came from another system, and apparently it's made of a material that nobody has ever seen before. The discovery was made thanks to the Department of Defense. They were able to detect where the meteorite exploded in the atmosphere. Then, the archaeologists took a boat and combed the ocean floor with a sled full of magnets. The magnets picked up 50 spherules, metallic spheres that look a little like marbles. They have gold and blue hues, almost resembling miniature planets. When researchers studied the spherules, they found them to be 84% iron, 8% silicon, 4% magnesium, plus additional traces of other elements. They're tiny but very important. 
Avi says the material is stronger than any space rock ever seen or cataloged before by NASA. The sheer strength of the material, coupled with the fact that it was moving quicker than most meteors, is what has Avi thinking it's a piece of alien technology. So, he compared the meteor to the Voyager spacecrafts that have been launched by NASA. When those spacecraft, currently hurtling through space, exit the solar system, 10,000 years will have passed. If one of them collides with another planet a billion years from today, it will look like a meteor with a weird composition moving unusually quickly. The suggestion is that the meteorite fragments found in the sea are part of an extremely old spacecraft, one that was launched millions of years ago from another planet. Number 7. A Monstrous Mammoth Tusk At a rock quarry in England, a fossil hunter recently came across a huge mammoth tusk. The tusk is about 4 feet long, and once extended from the face of one of the biggest mammoth species that ever existed, the steppe mammoth. It was a truly gargantuan creature that lived 400,000 years ago. The man behind the discovery is Jamie Jordan. He's the founder of Fossils Galore, a small museum that specializes in ancient bones. He said he couldn't believe the size of the tusk he found, and that it was just lying there, waiting to be picked up. Jordan and his colleague Sarah were walking around the quarry when they noticed something camouflaged against the sand. It turned out to be the fossilized tusk from a fully grown male. According to Jordan, the mammoth likely stood 13 feet tall. Jordan has found other fossils before in the area, but never anything this impressive. Normally, he picks up toe bones, maybe some teeth. But now, scientists are desperately analyzing the tusk to learn more about the mammoth's life. Maybe it can even help in a future cloning experiment. Number 6. The Olmec Colossal Heads the Olmec civilization emerged around 1500 BC. They developed fantastic art styles and impressive architecture. Everything the Olmec developed, including their calendars and their complicated belief system, would become the basis for the Mayans and the Aztecs. The Olmec was what you might call the godfather civilization of ancient Mexico and the surrounding area. One of the biggest mysteries of the Olmec are the colossal heads found randomly in the jungle. These heads are massive, and they are molded from volcanic basalt. The volcanic rock used to build the heads was transported through the mountains over a distance of around 45 miles, and this happened around 900 BC, meaning it was a serious feat of ingenuity. The logistics alone would have been a nightmare for crafting the giant stone heads. They weren't even put anywhere overly important. Archaeologists have found many of them scattered near archaeological sites in Mexico, specifically in the states of Veracruz and Tabasco, but they've also been found sitting alone in the trees or resting on random grassy hills. Scientists don't know who the heads are supposed to represent. Many researchers think the heads were molded in the likeness of powerful Olmec rulers. But the truth is that the whole thing is still a mystery. Number 5. Predicting AI Historian expert Dr. Adrian Mayer recently published a book in which she claims Greek mythology predicted today's modern technology. Artificial intelligence, androids, driverless cars, all of the modern miracles of the world were apparently predicted 2,500 years ago by the ancients. Dr. Mayer from Stanford University gave plenty of examples in her new book. She says Hephaestus, god of the forge and metalworking, was the real father of AI. In Greek myth, he crafted mechanical maids using gold, then equipped them with the ability to learn and reason. Mayer suggests these automatons were the Greek equivalent of AI robots. She even called Pandora a wicked AI fembot programmed to release eternal misery on the human race when her box is opened. Then there was the killer robot made of bronze that guarded the island of Crete. In Homer's Iliad, he detailed a pilotless ship that was able to guide Odysseus back to Ithaca. Dr. Mayer also drew parallels between the driverless ship and modern GPS technology. If you want to learn more, the book is called Gods and Robots, Myths, Machines, and Ancient Dreams of Technology. Technology. But do you think the Stanford doctor could be seeing technology where there isn't any? Or is it possible that the Greeks really did envision the future of technology, and if they did know, how could they possibly have predicted AI and GPS? Unfortunately for now, it's a mystery. Number 4. Human DNA Being a Homo sapiens just got a little less special. 
Researchers from the University of California, Santa Cruz, have completed a jaw-dropping study involving the uniqueness of human DNA. Apparently, they discovered that only 7% of modern human DNA is completely unique. That means that 93% of our genetic makeup is something that we share with extinct species of humans, like our cousins the Neanderthals or the Denisovans. Computational biologist Nathan Schaefer said the percentage of our DNA that's unique is extremely small, and it's this kind of information that has scientists rethinking everything they know about what separates modern humans from the people of the past. But just listen to this. Not everyone has equally unique DNA. The vast majority do have the 7% of specifically human DNA, but interestingly, some have only about 1.5% of unique Homo sapiens DNA. So does that mean that some people really are more like cavemen than others? Researchers didn't make any controversial statements like that, but looking at the numbers, it does appear that some folk may have less unique DNA, sharing more genetics with extinct species of humans. One thing's for sure is that modern humans aren't a special creation of the world. There is only a tiny amount of DNA in human blood that separates us from the failed humans of the past, similar to the difference between a modern wolf and an extinct dire wolf. Number 3. Doodles in the Bible a woman got extremely bored 1,300 years ago, so she sat down with a copy of the Act of Apostles from the New Testament. But the book, printed in the 8th century AD, didn't seem to entertain this mystery woman enough to keep her from doodling in the margins. She didn't doodle with a pen, though. Instead, she scratched some extremely cartoonish characters into the book, and she scratched them into the pages so lightly that they are barely visible to the naked eye. But the doodles aren't completely invisible. Researcher Jessica Hodgkinson at the University of Leicester noticed the markings and decided to reveal them. Using modern technology, she was able to trace all the doodles made by the mystery woman in her copy of the religious script. On page 18, the weird sketches were accompanied by some letters. The letters read Edberg Birio CP something N. It sounds like a lot of gibberish, but definitely had meaning to whoever the author was. Jessica thinks it may have been an attempt by the book's owner to write her name underneath the margin. Her name was likely Idberg, and she may have been a nun at a religious community somewhere in Kent, England. The book doesn't have any more secrets as far as anyone can tell. There was just the leftover markings of a really bored nun, someone who wrote her name and doodled cartoon characters on holy scripture. If that's not relatable, I don't know what is. Number 2. The Three-Fingered Alien An alien creature with three fingers has been discovered in Peru, and one researcher believes it could be proof of an entirely new species of human. The information is questionable, though. British researcher Steve Mera allegedly gained access to a series of bizarre mummies that were excavated by grave robbers in Peru. The bodies came from somewhere in the Nazca region, the same place where you can find the famous Nazca lines. The mummified remains have elongated skulls, and extending from the palms of their hands were only three fingers. They were handed over to the Inkari Institute in 2017, which is a non-profit archaeological research institute. But since then, most of the archaeological community has dismissed the bodies as fakes. Steve took DNA samples from the mummified remains of one of the bodies, and analysis of the DNA showed it to be 98.5% human and 1.5% totally unknown. The mummy also dates back to about 1,800 years ago. Steve's opinion is that the body is a human-slash-alien hybrid. He believes it to be physical evidence of an alien genetic program in which they mixed their DNA with the DNA of humans. But if that's true, why have there been no other discoveries of this nature? Also, why has the entire scientific community ignored a three-fingered alien found half a decade ago in Peru? Is Steve Mera a real scientist? Or is he nothing but a con artist? Sadly, we just don't know. Number 1. The Unknown City Alfred Isaac Middleton was an adventurer and explorer in the final days of the 19th century. Not much is known about his adventures, or his personal background for that matter. It's a mystery as to where he grew up and where he studied, and it's also unclear if he was even a real person. 
So, without evidence, Alfred Middleton is little more than a myth. According to the stories, Alfred explored the farthest reaches of the globe in search of lost civilizations, and it was during a mission to the jungles of Sumatra in Indonesia that Alfred vanished into thin air. He supposedly walked into the thick forest in 1901 and never walked out again. When Alfred was lost, so too were his journals and his scholarly writings. Alfred allegedly discovered a fabled lost city somewhere in Southeast Asia that he'd written about in his journal. But once it was lost, all the information about the city disappeared with it, and since then, the existence of the legendary place has only survived in rumors and myth. Most recently, some extremely unusual photographs began appearing online. Images of strange buildings deep in the jungle that were made to look like spacecraft started to make rounds on the internet. These were weird stone monuments that were unlike anything seen before from an ancient civilization. In the photos, there were structures shaped like flying saucers and even pyramids deep in the jungle. The pictures were supposedly part of the expedition Alfred Middleton took into the wilds of Southeast Asia, but there is no way to confirm that the photos are over a century old. There's not even a way to confirm that Alfred was a real explorer. Thanks for watching! Which crazy discovery did you find the most interesting? Let me know in the comments below! If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, and I'll see you next time! Bye!